understand more than we do obviously inland. But what happens with the paper itself is we add it to a print device and by adding steam heat very shortly, or in a very short period of time, we change the molecular structure of the paper. So we end up with paper that's got a curl like this. Okay. Now that paper feeds through a device that's got multiple paper parts and you end up with multiple jabs. Okay. This machine's got a fairly straight paper path. Uh, in other words, the paper will feed in out into the standard feed tray, which by the way, the capacity is a thousand sheets of paper and 500 in each tray. The paper will feed in, pass through underneath the heads and straight out the top of the device. Okay, depending on your finishing configuration, but we'll get into finishing now now. We ask about duplex printing. We know in the school environments, the one thing that the teachers are or do not enjoy anymore is the fact that they have to manually turn the page over on the RG or the duplicator side of the business. However, this machine will do duplex printing for us and it'll do it in 120 images per minute. So it retains the speed of which it runs. So the images you see, they're coming out now. We duplex print it, print it on both sides. Okay. Again, Charles mentioned the cold process. This machine can run all day, every day, as such. We've got some customers we've just done recent tests on. In fact, customers that have had the machine for many years, and they're averaging anywhere between 800,000 and 1.8 million ticks per machine, per branch, per month. Okay, so the machines are more than capable of handling the high volume. Now, Sean mentioned again earlier, we're not zero graphics quality. We very much understand that. But I ask you again, or I ask you, if we were taking color to a school, would this not be sufficient for the education sector starting at 15 cents an image? Yeah. Color on every single page. I can tell you the average cost of this was exactly that. And again, when we talk about coverage, we need to understand one thing that's very simple. The way this technology puts the ink on the page is very different to the way a copier puts ink on the page. I need to explain that. So basically, toner-based products, what happens is the toner gets put on, positive negative charge, electrostatic transfer, it's fused onto the page. With inkjet technology, the paper passes underneath the bank of heads, it sprays the ink onto the page, and your image passes out the other side. Okay, so what that also means for us is anyone got a bottle of water? And we can ask for a bottle of water. This, as you've seen, has just come out of the machine. I'm gonna do a little test, and this is a very um, good selling feature for the schools. If I can just step over to the carpet chair. I'll do it here. I'll do it over here. If we do that with any toner-based product, we'll just mess with we'll that any toner based product, we know what's going to happen. That toner is going to smudge on the page. You'll see the ink is completely dry. The page breaks up before the ink comes off the page. Okay, very nice selling feature for the school markets. If we get back into the machine itself, we've obviously shown you now simplex, we've shown you duplex. What about the finishing options? What finishing options can we offer the schools? Ideally, the configuration you see here on the machine is the configurations that the school would, schools would look at or the education sector would look at. It's a basic, straightforward machine with a face down finisher capable of doing corner stapling and side stapling up to 50 sheets of paper, giving you a 100 page pack. So if I jump into the finishing, I'll just run a pack of that quickly, and then I'll run the next pack. This, this finisher will stay, will finish for you. 80 gram. Uh, 80 gram, 80 gram, 80 gram, 80 gram. It's 50 sheets, 84, 80 gram. It's 25 sheets, 83, 80 gram. Yep. Again, indication shows us from the surveys we've done, the majority of the work we've done in the schools is A4. There's our stock standard corner staple, okay, and it's nice and neat to the page. So if we look at a corner staple and we look at a side staple, very different. Yeah. Please don't get confused with the idea of saddle stitching. Probably only 8 to 10% of the schools in the market at this point in time are looking to do saddle stitching. We do have a finishing solution for that, which will be a multifunctional finisher, and that will fit on this side of the device. Okay, so face down finisher, up to 50 sheets of paper, corner stapling, side stapling, and offset stacking. If we go to the multifunctional finisher, which is a bigger device, we look corner stapling, side stapling, pad stapling, two hole, four hole, all the good things of a full out multi a multifunctional finisher. Okay. Um, if we want to look at what else we're capable of doing on the device, and I do want to just, I'll print one of these. Um, yeah. Then this is next full color. Does the machine have user codes? Must have. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 32 groups of 100 users. So all your ordinary, ordinary uh, 
Additional features like user code, so on and so forth, can be loaded on the machine itself. Okay, so it's a straightforward model. Um, it's got 11 different grayscales on the machine. So as you can see, your grayscale and your image is not dotted like your pixelation, well not the pixelation, but the um, DTPs on the DPI on the duplicator yeah. side of it. It is obviously 11 grayscales on the device itself. Um, if we want to, and if we have a look at the schools again, we need to understand what the schools are printing. And more importantly, to encourage them, we need to have a look at what they are outsourcing. Now this is a question that often gets mis misguided or not even asked at the school. A lot of the time, a salesperson will walk in the, into the school, they've got a 40 page or 30 page, and they will quote on those devices. So with this, as Sean mentioned, we look at a TCO, and we have to bring that all into one stable. So we look at what gets outsourced. And the nice thing with this device is we can print certificates, uh, can be done, and it's as simple as, we're going to the device, you'll see from the operation of the ease of use, we're going to the device and I can physically change paper type to a higher quality, for example. I can say, okay, I can go out, I can then go and put a higher quality card stock. From a paper thickness point of view, we're capable of running from the normal 47 or 47 GSM all the way through to a 210 GSM paper on the machine. Okay, this is a inkjet board, Riser provides this inkjet board, but this is an inkjet board, we basically pop it in the machine, will run slower because we're running a much higher quality now. But just to give an indication, I can go back into my storage and while we're on the storage, I can mention to you that the machine has 430 gigs of available storage space. So in applications where documents get printed repetitively, the documents can physically be stored on the machine. Manuals, training manuals, so on and so forth. This also allows the market to print exactly what they need, opposed to printing um, Overprinting, having stuff stored on the shelf. So if we look at this for example, um, in fact I'll go into this one over here, and I'm going to print. What does it mean to you? It's a 1 kVA 110 10 amp hour battery. That's it. And that'll give you between five to 7,000 prints on this product before the battery starts running flat. You all know it. You all seen the Macy inverter. What does the Macy inverter go for these days, guys? 14 grand. So I'm going to photocopy even a maybe 25 page print of photocopy and they can run on a 14 grand inverter that will give them 7,000 prints out of it. doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. How many of you have noticed your base being lost or volume in your base being lost due to uh, load shedding? This negates that altogether. This takes away the problem with that. The other advantage is you end up having schools from surrounding areas coming to the school that has this device because it's got the inverter system on it. Why can our machine run on this, this inverter system? at full running capacity with all the finishing peripherals on the device, the machine will draw a maximum of 400 watts at full running capacity. Okay, 400 watts. My Xbox air dryer was 2,000 watts. I run four of these at the same time. Okay, what I do want to point out that's very, very important is I'm going to hand a few of these out. If you'll just have a look at the one side, the mono side first. We'll just hand a few of these out, guys. Pass them around. And then we'll just talk about this quickly. So, and keep looking at the mono side, please don't turn it over just yet, guys. Just hand those out. Don't turn it over. Don't turn it over just yet. You're the Xbox school kids, man. You listen. Don't turn it over. So, if you've all got a copy, can we talk about it? Let's look at the mono side first, guys, or black side.